Okay, so this is my recording template. Um, first thing to point out is that you'll need a sound card, which is more than two outputs, which, um, which are usually hooked up to a pair of monitors. So you need a sound card with multiple outputs for this template to work properly. Also, you'll probably need to configure your sound card's GUI in some way to set this up. Here I've got one track for a mic input, and this can be used for a line input as well. Second, I've got a playback track for playing back music, which let's say your vocalist or whatever will be singing to. And of course, you can have as many of these as you like. I'm just keeping it simple for the purpose of the, of the video. Here I've got a track with a metronome on it, and I've downloaded this for free at 4live.me. So I've, I've chosen not to use Ableton's built-in metronome and I've adjusted this one so that it's possible to select different metronome sounds. So here's the metronome that came from 4LiveMe and I've just added some chains with simplers on them and like I said I've used what sounds I've wanted, in this case a bongo and a shaker. So to get your mic or your line signal into Ableton then you need to select x in from the ins and outs drop down menu and choose whatever number line or mic input that you've got your external source hooked up to in your in your uh, external sound card. If you can't see this little box, then you use the shortcut Option Command I on a Mac, or click this button over here, and that'll open the ins and outs drop down menu. While I think of it, open the preferences, which is Command Comma on a Mac, and this is where you can configure your inputs and your outputs. And it's important for this setup that you have the stereo one and two and the three and four selected. And this will make sense in a minute. And good to have your buffer size down low to help avoid any latency issues when you're when you're recording. A quick look at the master channel. The master out, which will go to the monitors, is set to one and two as usual. And the headphone output will be monitored by the vocalist is set to three and four. There's three return tracks and one is called dry, except it has a utility and a limiter on it with a minus six dB ceiling. The limiter is to prevent accidental volume overloads occurring and the other return track has different reverbs on it one short one medium one large and they're grouped together split up into chains and i can switch between them like so and again there's a limiter on this just in case um, i'll get to the third return track a little bit later what's important here is the audio outputs of the return tracks are sent to output three and four in the drop down menu so that this is the headphone output and not the output one and two, which is going to the studio monitors. Um, also, the sends in the master channel are set to pre-fader, and this uh, Q knob is set to solo and not to Q. So now the person in the mix room can adjust the volume of the person being recorded or the volume of the playback track by using the volume sliders on the mixer as usual. And the volume levels of the tracks going to the person wearing the headphones and doing the recording is controlled and monitored independently via the send and returns. So if when a person wearing the headphones wants the levels of the metronome or the playback track, or of course themselves changing, then it's possible to do this without affecting the volume going to the monitors and vice versa. If the person in the mix room wants to up the volume in the monitors or pan the volume, then the person recording doesn't hear any change, which of course is pretty important. So this is why the sends are set to pre-fader, so that any volume or pan changes done in the mixer doesn't reach the person recording and wearing the headphones. If the person in the mix room doesn't want to hear the metronome, then it's possible to mute that whilst the person recording can still hear it. If the person recording wants reverb added to their vocals, then the other send and return is used like this. Also, you can get creative if you want by adding effects to a return track. Just add whatever effects you want. And of course, if you want to record this, then you can set up an audio track and route the return track into that. And here I've just disabled the sends here to prevent any craziness uh, going on. So that's pretty much it, I think.